So you've made it, drawn your whole manga and inked it, and you've made it past the climax of your journey. However, everything is not over. You still don't have time to celebrate. We have to gather our remaining energy to deal one last blow to our manga to make sure it's done for good. If this was a feast, it'd be the last meal in our course. So let's give thanks for making it this far. Now let's gather our final materials to make our manga look even more solid than it already does. And with that, let's bring together and put all our chips on the table to finish our epic journey. And that brings me to the topic of today's video on the desserts of manga, toning, sound effects, and lettering. Let's get into it. But before we get into this video, if you don't know me, my name is Vandal. I am a self-published mangaka and author of note. My goal is to help other manga and comic book artists with their art and their writing skills to craft the story of their dreams. To really help motivate you and mangaka around the world, I have created a manga and comic book competition that's open to all creators that's currently running from October 2nd to April 21st with a cash prize totaling of $3,500 USD. If you're interested in registering, click the link in the description below now, but let's get into the video. So hey there everyone, coming back with another video in the manga making series and this one's gonna be a bit lengthy but please stay around till the end because today we're gonna cover a range of topics so let's just get into it. The first thing you're gonna wanna do after you're done inking your manga is tone. But what is tone exactly? So before we get into that, I want you to take a look at these two pictures. And can you tell me what is the difference between the two and which one is toned and which one is not? Pause the video here and look and see if you can see the difference. So they're actually both toned, and I'm sorry for the deceit, but tone basically refers to how light or dark a color is, and in this instance, we're working with gray, or more so the illusion of it. Now to better explain what tone is, let's take a look back at those two drawings that we looked at earlier, because they were both toned, but there was something that was really different about each of them. So this drawing here is using gray, the color that we all know and love that can be varied from light to dark in its scale and that's something that i'm going to talk about a little bit later in the idea of value because it's something that's super important to understanding how to tone your manga now this drawing here is a bit different this is what you call a screen tone now before there was all this digital hubbaloo that's not really a word but go with it this would be a sheet you know like a sheet of paper that you would put over an image and you would cut out with an exacto knife to apply tone to your artwork the other reason why screen tones work so well especially why manga could use it is because screen tones have these little black dots that can give the appearance of gray and it saves on printing costs because you're not actually using toner inside of your printing and that's why gray is seldom used inside of actual manga that is like in shonen jump and stuff so now that we understand a bit more about tone and what it is Let's get into why you should use tone. So I often see tone is used as a way to help the reader know where light is coming from and where shadows are cast. It's also a good way to give more depth to your artwork and you can use it to emphasize many different emotions that might happen throughout your manga. And honestly, there's no one way you can do with it. It's literally only limited by what you can imagine. Now, I want you guys to note this and that is you do not need to tone your manga. Sometimes it can be nice to have your artwork just stand on its own, and sometimes you don't need it. It can be just nice to have that little added depth. It's really honestly up to you. But if you've decided that you want to be that person who uses tone, let's get into how to use it. Okay, so there's going to be two approaches to this. Honestly, I don't recommend one of the ways I'm going to recommend, but that is traditional toning. I've talked about this in my manga supply video, but the reason I'm against physically toning is that it can be a hard learning curve, it's also very expensive, and you're also going to need a lot, a lot of tones. And figuring out how and where to apply them can be a whole nother issue inside of your own learning curve. But to be as thorough as possible, screen toning physically would be as follows. You'd have to have your artwork drawn, of course, inked and finalized, which is great. And for this example, I'll tone the skin of a character, so I'm gonna grab a sheet of tone, 
and then I'm gonna cut it out I'll cut out an area that's a little bit bigger than the head of my character that I intended to tone then I'll grab my knife exacto knife and then I'll gently cut it out uh, then I'll get rid of the excess tone and do away with any other unnecessary cleanup and that's the basics of toning your manga physically now that's done there are a few things I want to talk about here and that is paper weight with your tones if you're doing it physically make sure you have a thick enough paper because when you put that exacto knife down you are not just cutting through the tone you're also cutting through the paper so having thicker paper is also very important and just thinking about that going through and what kind of tones you want but with all of that out of the way and that superfluous stuff, I love these vocabulary words, let's get into the future because this is where things get saucy. Now, one more quick note that I wanna talk about, and I talked about value earlier, and value in art is the lightness and the darkness of colors. And that's what we're using our tone for, to smoothly stratify our contrast from light to dark and give it that realistic feel that we want our drawings to feel the full and almost even pop out of the page. I would practice a lot of value drawings, like getting from light to dark on 3D objects, 3D shapes, and think about how the light hits an object and study that to better apply that to our manga that we're gonna make. Value will also help us once we wanna start coloring and have an understanding of lights and darks, but that's a little bit more complex when you start throwing color into the equation. And that I'll get into another video if you guys are interested. You know, put it in the comments down below if you want me to talk about like how to color your manga. Now, toning digitally should be the main way to tone, even if you are traditional. If you are traditional, to get your manga to tone, basically digitally scan or put your artwork in a scanner and then put it in your program of choice. Now, I have went over digital toning before in my Clip Studio in-depth guide, so if you wanna be more familiar with what the program does, please go check it out because that's what I'm gonna be using over here. But I will go over that here as well. So for reference, I'm going to be using Clip Studio. So to tone, it's actually very simple. Grab your pen selection tool or even your selection wand, pick the area and then select and then click the tone icon here to see the many tones that you already have in the Clip Studio app. And a side note here is that I didn't talk about in the other videos is if you scroll down to the bottom, you're gonna see this sign right here. And if you click it, it's gonna take you to the Clip Studio website where you can find way more tones and a lot more other freebies that you can add into your manga that you might not be able to draw or might save you a bit more time if there's an effect that you're looking for or anything, you'll probably find it here. But I'll also teach you how to make anything into a tone, which is also important. Now, when you find the tone that you want, just drag that to the selected area and that section will fill with tone. Now, let's say you don't want your whole area toned in that selection. What do you actually do? Well, first you erase the tone that you just dropped into that selection. And let's take a look at our layers and we'll see our tone is there. This is important because when you drop your tone into that selection, it's going to create a whole new layer that is the tone that you wanted. And we have way more ways to express that now that we have it on its own layer. So now you can use any tool to add that tone. You can use the pencil brush, you can use the spray brush, you can use the brush brush, you can even use the paint brush. There's so many different brushes that you can use. Now, each tool will give you a different feel. The pen is gonna give you those sharp lines so you have the standard shadows. If you have a spray brush, you will have a softer feel to your toning and even a painterly one if you're going to use the paintbrush. Another combo is that I like to start out with the pen tool and when I was done toning whatever it is I was going to tone, I was going to use the soft eraser to give that soft look on your toning. There are honestly many ways and what I would recommend is you try out toning and see what combos work for the feel that you're trying to go for. It's all about experimentation here y'all. Ah, so there's something I wanted to talk to you guys about before, which is what if you don't have a tone that you want or that you actually need? Now, one of the beautiful things about Clip Studio and probably any other program, but we're going with Clip Studio right now, is that any image you want can be created and made into a tone, especially for those of you who don't have the skill yet for maybe backgrounds or you want that real realistic touch. What you can do is grab any photo, and I mean any photo. Of course, if it's copyrighted, you can't use that non-copyright stuff. <laughs> I'm watching y'all. 
so what you need to do is find a picture and then let's import it into the app what you're going to do is you're going to click file and then you're going to import your image whether it's through like your desktop or you can just drag and drop it then when it's there it's going to look like a normal picture like itself and now we're going to turn that into a tone by going into the layer property panel and then when we're going there we're going to click the little icon with the dots you'll see it next to the circles and all these other little icons make sure you're on the correct layer and when you click the icon with the dots your image will be now treated as a tone and broken up into those little tiny screen tone dots that we talked about earlier now it may look a little funny with all the dots and there's a way to actually make it a little bit more smoother than it might come out originally and what you can do is in the layer property panel there's a slider and you can control the density of the dots the higher that you move the slider the more smoother the tone will actually become and this applies to any and all tones that are already installed in clip studio that's how i was able to make those two pictures at the beginning of the video look so similar in terms of trying to distinguish which one was toned and which one wasn't but with that you can add anything your possibilities are really endless in what you can create as a tone for your manga one thing that i think we should all do and a very good tip to add to this is that you should study other manga and how do they actually use tone this will help give you a better idea on how you want to actually apply it because without some references you can add actually too much tone and that can be a problem as your artwork can look a little bit too muddy you just have to keep practicing to get that desired look that you want from toning but just like anything on this channel it's a lot of trial and error and over time you're just going to improve all right so let's get to the next part and for a moment i want you guys to watch this video and tell me what is the problem with this video Did you guys notice what was off about the video? All right, let's see if you got it. It's better. Now I will be able to move freely. Come on, you really think you'll be able to get through Gara's defenses just by dropping a couple of pounds of weight? That's right, it's missing sound. Sound effects are one of the few ways that we can allow our reader to really feel and hear what is going on inside of the manga. So what are sound effects? In manga and comics, sound effects are those little bits of sound that come from a character hitting, sitting, chewing, or whatever else sound is. Alright, they can be subtle, they can be bombastic depending on what happens, but it's something that can be overlooked and can add fullness and immersion to the world that you're trying to create. Now, why should we use sound effects? They are a great way to let our reader know how something sounds in our world. Some things in our world may not be the same in another world and we want to know how that sounds and it gives it that added hit punch crash or crackle because in the absence of that if you had no sound at all in your world your world would feel a bit hollow and perhaps empty and some people might not even notice this at first but those who have actually read comics and manga for a while will notice that there's something missing in this world here something that just feels a little bit off so one thing i would think about is adding those sounds Aside from just drawing your sound effects, where should you and how should you place your sound effects? Because I know it can be very confusing and annoying to obscure artwork that you've worked so hard on. So my first tip here is simple. Just add your sound effect to the area where sound is happening. That's the simple part. But now you need to work on what I would like to call sound effect composition. This is basically framing your sound to work in harmony with your art. Because a lot of the time, if you have not had that sound effect in your draft or in your storyboard, you might be displeased when it's actually time to put that over the artwork that you spend so much time on. So what you need to do is look at your artwork and do a little bit of give and take. And be mindful that your sound effect position in your art piece is in essence part of the overall artwork so you think of them as one that's why i was talking about drawing out your sound effects so you can really have them be custom and not have this worrisome idea in the back of your head you can also have it ranging from soft to thundering tight whatever it is you're looking for and that's where that malleability of being able to draw your sound effects comes in as well the other thing to keep in mind when you're thinking about your sound effects is scale 
and think about how sound works in actual life it can go from high to low or low to high and that reflects in how you draw your sounds from making making it smaller to big or bigger to small just something to keep in mind so you can help play around with that idea think about scale because there is volume in sound and you can show that so another idea that i had about the composition of your sound effects is something that i really want to devote a whole video to and that is something is called flow so you can use the sound effect to direct the reader's eye to the next panel to create better flow in your panels with that said don't be afraid to mix your sounds between some sounds that may not actually be words and mixing them with actual words that relate to the sound that you're trying to make so for example like skirt or versus like screech or bam a mix of these sounds are necessary and there will come a time where you aren't too sure about a sound that you want to make and bear with me here you may sound a little off if someone walks in on you like this but my recommendation is to make those sounds out loud and take your best crack at how to spell them mainly the sound effects that lack vowels and not the ones that are words so honestly here be creative and get wild with those sound effects okay now for the last part of our process and that is lettering and lettering is basically the putting the letters for our words in our manga they aren't sound effects and they tend to go in word bubbles narration bubbles and thought bubbles However, your lettering isn't always contained to always being inside of any of these bubbles. They can also be outside of them and just on top of your artwork, maybe to introduce a special character or to have a thought bubble that doesn't have the bubble. Now, one thing that can be important about lettering in relation to your dialogue is that it needs to be clear. Now that if your reader has a tough time reading what you have written, they're going to stop reading right away. So a few things here. One, do not write your dialogue by hand. More times than not, and even if you have the best handwriting in the world, you're probably the only one who can read it or only a select few who can. But Vandal, I have great handwriting. No, do not. Do not write it with your hands. If anything in your manga process was going to be digital, it should be this. Make sure to type your dialogue in so that it can be done in a lot of apps like Photoshop, Procreate, Clip Studio, honestly, whatever works for you. Just don't write it with your hands and a pencil. I'm watching you. I see you, Timmy. Now, at this point, your script should be done. And in the event that you made it here without one, I am amazed. But please go check out my video on how to make scripts to help you fine tune that script you might have or some things that you might have not seen. Now that said, make sure you choose a legible font. Generally, the font that is used is wild words for creating manga. That is the font that's used in a lot of manga that you probably read and maybe even some comics. I would use that for now as it's a pretty clear and not too harsh font for someone to read. I'm not a typographer or typographist. See, I don't even know what I am. So this is not my specialty, but you can look into why certain words feel away and it can actually be interesting and add a little toolkit to your belt of tools that you now have. All right. Was that funny? No. Okay. Another note is that it's okay to break the mold and use other fonts outside of wild words or whatever standard legible font that you're going to use, because maybe someone in your manga is saying something harsh or difficult or in a certain way and you want a font to convey that but generally when someone speaks use a clear readable font like wild words and you can play with sound like with bold and italics for emphasis as well in certain moments or if somebody even talks in a way that's fumbled you can have a font that represents that just make sure whatever you're doing there's a reason for it when you want clarity make it clear and if it's not clear there should be a reason for that so just some of those things you should be thinking about with your lettering. Now, I can't stress this enough. These programs don't come with spell check. So even though you might have spelled everything correctly in your script, your translation will come with errors. Changes will inevitably make it to one way or the other to make things smoother or something might change in the process of you upgrading your script. So just make sure you're always proofreading your work since we're in the final step 
have some other people read through it and make sure that you know what you put down actually makes sense and it's spelled correctly no reader likes silly mistakes so make sure you get it right and have other people read your work especially people that you trust so i talked about this earlier and the different types of ways your lettering will go into your manga and sometimes your text may not be in the word bubble or the narration bubble that i talked about it'll just be text over art explaining something a good rule of thumb with your text is to make sure that it's black first and that it has a white border around it. You can mess with this in your text settings inside of your art program and I'll show you here in Clip Studio. So what you're going to do first is you're going to click that letter A and then you're going to type your text like so. Now when you want to edit it, you're going to see this little pencil to edit. Whatever you want your font or color or etc to be, you'll see a whole list of settings. Set it to black and have it on wild words so you know what to do. And then you look at the text to check and make sure that the border is white. Now, more times than not, you wouldn't know that it's there since the paper is white and most of your dialogue and narration bubbles will be the same. But it'll make your life easier when it comes to non-white backgrounds to make it stand out against it to create that nice contrast. So outside of your manga, everything should honestly be put together. There's a lot in this video, but I think each section is enough to help you finish up the last parts of your manga if there's anything left. If you have any other questions or topics that you think I should cover, please put that in the comment section down below. But let's go into our quick review. So when toning, please do it digitally. Your life will be easier. Practicing your value colors from light to dark will give you a better understanding of tone mix screen tones and grays and if you're missing something get it from the clip studio site or import that image into your tone and to remember not to use too much and just have it as an option so you can accentuate your manga don't forget your sound effects they add life to your manga try and work on customizing your sound effects with your art or using fonts where necessary be aware of your composition and how your sound effects interact with your art. Also, use your sound effects to direct the reader's eye to where you want it to go next and mix sounds of how something sounds or using words that represent the sound you want to make. And lastly, lettering. Please do not write it. Always type it. Always. Use a clear font for your dialogue and change it up where necessary. Make sure you use spell check and make changes to allow your dialogue to improve. Make sure your text stands out when it's not on a white background using the steps that we discussed earlier. With all that, your manga should honestly be pretty much done. However, the journey is not done. Next, we're going to talk about the next steps. Where do you post it? What do you do about publishing, creating a cover, and all that good stuff. It's going to be another great video on the Vandal channel. <laughs> okay. But yeah, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. And if you did, you can hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more, and hit that bell for notifications when you want to hear things that I have to say. But yeah, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Boy. This was like one of the hardest ones that I've ever had to do. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Like this is like, I like doing these post credit things, but honestly, man, I could not speak today, but I hope you really enjoyed it. And you know, uh, yeah, thanks y'all doing the thing. All right. Catch y'all next. One. All right. Mm hmm. Yeah. Just making this video longer. I wonder who's still listening. Yep. Tone. Oh. All right, bye.